Happy October 28th, everyone. I'm Liam, and we are playing the 2024 Quest Calendar, The Leaf Riders of Renwood. It is Mythic Monday. Um, I am thinking... What day was this? This is the text. It was Friday when Ivy and Party got to Woodland Springs. Um, we... What happened here? We got a virtue point. And where did that happen? I think it was with this critter that was ill yeah right um so before you can begin to walk around the town a critter wrapped in blankets began to have a coughing fit and collapsed to the ground and ivy it said we could use a healing potion i let ivy use her healing light ability and she uh she gained one virtue for that it didn't completely heal the critter but it got her stable and then they were able to get help that healing light ability, um, Ivy didn't always have that. I don't know what level we got that. We got it, we had it at level four. Uh, we had it at level three. And we did not have it at level two. So when Ivy leveled up to three, she got this healing light ability. So that was new. She didn't have that back when the, the accident with her sister. So, um, I'm guessing she wishes she could have done something back then. And this, and now she was able to help this critter with that ability. So um, I think that is a likely moment that she could grow emotionally in her personal emotional quest. This fulfillment opportunity, it doesn't mirror, I don't think, the the event that happened in her past but it does touch on her issue so we're dealing with likely odds for her to grow from this and so we're right here uh likely so we're gonna roll two ten sided die if i can find my tenors so here we go does ivy grow we get a 114 that's a yes it's almost an exceptional yes <laughs> so it's a pretty powerful experience um it's a yes that means she gains one uh point towards her fulfillment of this emotional personal emotional quest that takes her to seven of 12 on that progress which is great so now we interpret what that means i think yeah i think that's just it she um she realizes she heals this critter and then she realizes what she did and she realizes if she'd been able to do this back then with her sister maybe it would have um her sister wouldn't have lost the ability to fly and uh ivy perceives this that that could go either way right she could feel really guilty about that but in this moment I think Ivy realizes she has grown, and, and though she can't go back and and change things, she knows that going forward, um, she can do, she can make a difference. And that's that. So, flashback concluded. When last we played, Ivy was approached by some adventurers who offered to join our party for a fee. <laughs> we decided to stick with our party as is. And that is where we left things. So let's see what adventure is on the calendar for us today. Uh oh. Looks like combat. A sudden scream of terror pierces the tranquility, followed by an earth shattering crash that reverberates through the town. You turn toward the source of the commotion and are met with a horrifying spectacle distorted and grotesque monsters are mercilessly tearing through the peaceful streets, leaving chaos in their wake. There are four beasts we're going to fight here. I don't see any hidden icons. Um, looks like normal con combat, attack, damage, and defense. No special roles here. So, here we go. Um, make some space in our die tray we're gonna roll the first beast the beast lowers its head and charges at you with incredible speed we want to beat his defense of 16 we get a 14 plus 8 attack we easily hit him and now we're hoping to do five points of damage and ivy does 2d12 plus three damage here's my other 12 sided 
oh my goodness, 17 plus 3 is 20. We take out the first beast, beast pretty easily. Beast 2, the beast rears up on its hind legs and then slams its front hooves and tusks down onto you. Okay, we want to hit a defense of 17 and we get it. That's a 20. So we get a boondi we can hold on to. We're hoping to do 16 points of damage and we get a 19 plus 3's 20. That's another beast down easily. Beast 3, oh he's got a defense of 19. That's pretty impressive. Using its tusks, the creature makes an upward thrusting motion trying to launch you into the air. And we roll a 10. <laughs> Plus 8 attack is 18. If we can get one more point, uh, and I think we can easily do that. Ivy has a Radiant Blast. Um, I think we'll go ahead and use a Surge. What do we need? One point? Yeah. So... We don't even really need to roll this, um, but we will. We use one Surge, we use our Radiant Blast, add D4 to a single attack roll, and we get a 3, so we easily hit him. Beast 3, 16 health. So, 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 3 is 17, we take out Beast number 3. Last but not least, Beast 4, the creature swings its head from side to side, slashing its sharp tusks horizontally in an attempt to catch you in a deadly arc. Okay, he's got a defense of 16, we get a 2. Okay, uh, we miss this guy. So we want to defend against his attack of 15, and we get 17. Easily defend, meaning we take 2 points of damage instead of we would have taken 4. So that takes us down to 29 health from 31. And what's it say here? If you did not kill all the beasts, they take off running and flee the town. So we killed three, one runs away. If you killed three enemies, collect D4 plus one amber. That's a four plus one is five. That takes us to 67 amber. 67. And what else here? The town slowly emerges from safety and inspects the mess. In its dying breath, one of the beasts slowly transforms into an innocent creature. Oh no. A family of warthogs looks on in terror as they recognize their missing son. Oh my goodness. Well, that's... <laughs> now I wish we hadn't killed any. My goodness. Okay, so that's the mystery of the missing warthog and his friends solved, I suppose. Although we don't know what caused them to go insane here and become unrecognizable. So maybe we'll find that out tomorrow because that, my friends, is October 28th. So we shall say goodbye for now and visit Ivy and friends again tomorrow. I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching.